Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure all of us have a mobile phone. I ask you now kindly, can you please turn it off? Disconnect it from the internet if you haven't already done so. There's a reason to this madness, but I'll tell you later. Has everyone done it over here? Is everyone disconnected? It's extremely important. Now, I want us all to start thinking about information, data. It's everywhere. Perhaps overwhelming, perhaps addicting, perhaps stimulating, even arousing. Information and our access to it has become the core of our daily lives and our relationships. But is this information killing us? Our dependency on mobile phones and information has grown, if not already, to the fact that more of our day is used looking at data than any other activity. We use it for our social activity, our financial activity, our business activity, news, entertainment. We are constantly using our phones and information. I am sure I am not alone to say that I am constantly connected. I can't remember the last time I didn't have my mobile phone with me. When it runs low on battery, I search for the, where's the nearest plug so I can charge it. I sleep, it comes to sleep with me, I wake up with it. I eat with it. It's constantly with me. Perhaps it started as a, a sense of security, you know, if I was in an accident or car troubles or reaching a family member. But soon, my mobile phone became my best friend. It talks to me. I, I talk to it. It guides me. It teaches me. It even suggests things that it believes I want to hear, like news, suggests friendships, suggests what to eat, for example. When the pandemic hit, our relationship completely changed. It stepped into another gear. We had Zoom, Meet, Netflix, Facebook, WhatsApp, TikTok, God knows what else, everything. All this data was coming to me constantly, without delay, rapid fire. During Zoom calls, my phone would be buzzing there on the table, new messages, new photos, and without question, every time I would pick it up and be distracted. But I felt stressed. I felt blocked. I felt that my view of the world was really changing. I had a hard time focusing for long periods of time. And my communication started to be one sentence uh, messaging or memes. I knew I was addicted to hyper information. My brain began to feel a bit mushy, like filled with pieces of plastic, wrapped in plastic perhaps, and cutting off a bit of the oxygen for my real experience in the world. I realized that I was remembering less, learning less, everything seemed a bit more foggy, and I had fewer new ideas. It was harder to make sense of things around me. New information came so fast that I didn't have a chance to even think about it, and I began to, felt, to feel manipulated. This started to create a feeling of being disturbed or something unhealthy. In talking to my friends and colleagues and, f and family, I realized I was not alone, but that in fact, many people were feeling this. For some time now, I have been following with great interest the world of plastic and plastic pollution and how this has been affecting our world. And for me, when I started to listen to the word information, I started to have the same emotional response. Like, it's, it's just too much. Something, we have to do something about this because we're just not sustainable. I'm a computer scientist from MIT. I've spent most of my career 
with data, analyzing data, and trying to discover how data influences our decision-making process. I was around in the early days of the internet, not that old, but <laughs> at least followed the sequence, and I had the dream that if we were all going to be connected, everyone and everything, and that this connection was going to allow us to access information easily. And this process would lift us into a new level where people could communicate easily with less judgments and so forth. Obviously, I was not alone in this. There was many, many people, companies, everyone was trying to connect everybody together and provide as much information as possible. But this is also the story behind plastic. Without question, plastic is one of the best materials ever invented. It has touched all of our lives. It touches almost everything we do. It has lifted society to a new level in medicine, in building, in transportation. And many, many innovations have come out of the world of plastic. But now we start to realize that there is truly a cost to the environment and to our health. And in the past few years, thank God, we've started to recognize this and we've started to do something about it. So step by step, we're addressing this. Unfortunately, I don't think we can say the same about information. But I hope after this evening that we all think about it and perhaps we start to move in this direction. You may ask me, okay, how is information in plastic the same? I want to look at a few pieces of information. We dump one truck full of plastic into our oceans every minute. We also dump 100 megabytes of new information per person per minute onto the internet. 88% of the ocean surface has been polluted in some way or another by plastic. And we have to ask, how much of the information on the internet is really waste? 66 of the world's 66 percent of the world's fish at any one time have ingested plastic. Us as humans ingest five grams of plastic on a daily basis. Infobesity, or the ingestion of too much information, I would claim is at epidemic levels. And finally, 50 percent of plastic is single use, with only 9% being recycled. How much information that we see on the internet is actually single use, or has a very short lifespan, but is still living around us? And what about quantities? So when we look at plastic, which started more or less into the marketplace in 1950, we see that it's been continually growing. On an annual basis, the amount of plastic produced has continually to grow. And this plastic is accumulating in our world. If we compare this to the amount of information which is being generated, it looks quite similar. It started a little later, but nonetheless, increasing on an exponential basis. This year alone, 2021, we will generate 79 zettabytes of new information. That's 79 trillion gigabytes, where each gigabyte we could think of as three to 4,000 photos. So just imagine the amount of data that's being produced. Now, this leads us to another point that's not just about quantity, but it's also about our behavior and how we're actually dealing with information. So now we have this term zombies, which is smartphone zombies. And perhaps we've had experience with this, where we see people who are only involved in the virtual world of their phone, but walking around amongst us. And if we start to look at some statistics, maybe we realize why. 6.5 hours per day. This is the average amount of time we spend on our cell phones. We are interrupted daily 58 times. 
And when those times were interrupted, normal frequency is three minutes. If we think that for most humans, the time to refocus or to reconcentrate on something we're doing takes 20 minutes, you can imagine with these statistics the kind of distractions we're having. So what's going on? This is leaving us confused. We're having a hard time determining facts, it's alternative facts. We're getting more insecure. We're comparing ourselves to virtual personalities, not things which are living in the world we're living in, but we're none nonetheless comparing ourselves to these and being insecure about it. Clearly this is stressing us out. And we're becoming more agitated. We're becoming more frustrated. And in the end, with this type of information that is coming to us, our brains are actually turning off. Now, ironically, this is exactly the opposite of what our initial intentions were, where we would be, have access to more information, we would all be connected, and we would all be lifted up. And instead, our brains are being turned off. So what has changed? Some things that, the, the last uh, piece of some things that have actually affected us are being less productive and less creative and less understanding. And actually this is causing our IQ to be lower. So infobesity or the overloading of information is actually causing a negative effect on our IQ. So now what's changed? I believe that many things have changed. One, we're used to or we think about retrieving information or pulling information from the internet or another source. We may ask for uh, a recipe for cookies, for example. We type it into Google, Google gives us a response, and then we have our recipe. But in fact, more recently, we've seen that information is actually pushed to us. We get notifications. There's news, there's messages from friends, even YouTube says if there's a new, a new video which has been posted. TikTok constantly throwing stuff at us. And this starts to create what I call interactive information. It's a give and take. There starts to be a dialogue with, with data. The, the data starts to lead us and move us from one place to another. Of course, this leading from one place to another because often there's algorithms which are involved, which understand and start to learn about our interests and what kind of information we find warm and fuzzy and guides us to this. So then we enter into some issues about our biases. So for example, we have a, a digital echo chamber, which means that we search and receive information, information which confirms our biases we're searching for information on things we already want to hear. Also, we often believe that things that are repeated to us more often are more truthful. And this is called the illusionary truths effect. In addition, I don't know why, but for some reason on the internet now, everyone who publishes anything, whether it be a blog, a document, a research article, is given a similar weight as to, their, as to their validity and credibility. And I call this trusted sources. So many of us are taking any information as a trusted source. So I ask now, and you're probably asking me, so what's the solution? What should we be doing? And really, it comes down to us in the same way that we deal with with plastic or other issues like this in the world. Less is more. I personally have started to use my phone at least 20 minutes less per day. When I'm doing something, I take it, put it in another room, I turn it off, I make sure that when I'm in dialogue with someone that I'm not involved in my phone or being disrupted by my phone. We need to be skeptical of information we're receiving. Now information comes from everywhere. We can't be sure that it's coming from a trusted source or things like this. So we need to confront information. I, for example, watch CNN and Fox News. 
and I try to compare them so I can take a better view on my understanding of how people are seeing the world and where information is coming from. In addition, there's quality versus quantity. Perhaps this is a bit more difficult to, to understand what's quality information versus quantitative information or quality information. But I would say that if information is on a blog or someplace where you don't know the source or people are just chatting, this tends to have less quality to it. And that we should be, it's fine to, to look at these things, but we should be taking our information of things that are guiding us and helping us make decisions, which is more quality driven. So now, I return to my initial opening, where I said I was going to ask you something to do something maddening, which was to turn off your phone. Now, I want you to think about how you felt when I asked that. Did you feel anxious? Did you feel angry? Did you feel relieved, perhaps? Intimidated? It's important to understand this because this will tell you greatly your relationship with information today. So now I invite you to please reconnect your phones and don't let information get you. Thank you. Thank you.